Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. This video is about JS8 Core, and I'm going to connect this beast here, the uh, PRC320, to my computer. And to do that, I'm going to use, of course, uh, an interface. And uh, if you haven't seen part one, JS8 Core was called FT8 Core before. Now it's JS8 Core after the name of its uh, creator. JS8 Core is a digital mode that allows keyboard to keyboard communications. And I'm going to use this interface here between the PRC320 and my computer. My uh, Mini Pro SC interface has a Mini DIN connector. And of course, uh, this plugs in the back. And the other end of the cable goes into my KX2, and that is the cable for the KX2. Now, of course, uh, I need another cable, so, and uh, what they did here is that they put a DB9 connector. That's a serial connector, but it's just there to connect the cables. Actually, it's kind of ugly, I don't like it, but it's pretty useful. And on the other hand, I have this uh, Klansman military connector, which is an audio cable. And there is nothing on the other end. And so that's what I'm going to use. I need to connect these two. Now, of course, I could simply use my KX2 instead of that big clunky uh, PRC320, but I'd like to try portable operations. And uh, I don't like to take my KX2 outside. I mean, it's, I know, I, you know, people do it, but, I paid so much money for that radio that, you know, I don't want to risk it. Also, the KX2 is a Morse code machine and it really excels in that role, but it's not really a digital mode radio. You have to reduce power to 5 watts if you want to use the KX2 or it's going to get too hot. Now, this big chunky aluminum brick, <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Nothing's going to happen to it, you know, you could use it 30 watts maximum power. I'm sure it's going to be fine. And it's very stable in frequency, so great for digital modes. Now, I've already said it in part one, but I'm not a big fan of uh, digital modes for prepping. Now, it doesn't mean it can be done. And actually, I suggest that you go check out uh, Julian's videos, OH8STN at Survival Tech Nord. He has excellent videos on the subject. I just like simplicity. And for me, the simplest, the lightest, the better. But it would be stupid on my part not to know about the latest developments in radio technology and digital modes because they have their place. And in many situations, uh, they are actually uh, more performant, you know, efficient than Morse code or any other mode for that matter. And <laughs> I know what you're going to say, Gilles, what are you talking about? Your PRC320 isn't light. And <laughs> yes, it's pretty darn heavy, I, I admit. But in some situations of extremely harsh environments, uh, it could be pretty useful. And this thing is practically indestructible. That's why I like it. I wouldn't want to carry it on my back, that's for sure. But it's a great radio. Is it the best for prepping? No, but it has specific applications, just like digital modes. So we are putting the two together. All right, enough rambling. Let's just build a cable and because I have to get outside and make some contacts. So here, for instance, I'm trying to find the uh, PTT contact and I'm going to touch every, con ah, there it is, second one. So it's this one right here. And I want to make sure, of course, that uh, it's not connected to anything else on the connector. That's it. All right, so this is a little bit of a mess, but uh, here I have the uh, connector for the interface which is drawn right here and I've identified where it connects to the um, military cable. So I've identified the colors here already, but of course nothing's to say that uh, yours is going to be the same. So you would have to of course make sure that uh, it's the same colors. So now all I have to do is to uh, solder this on the DB9 connector. Now one problem that I have to consider is that uh, the audio level for the microphone is going to be way too high uh, coming out of the interface probably to the uh, PRC320. So I'll probably have to put a resistor here in between and uh, to make sure that there isn't too much audio. 
uh, I'm not sure it's going to work well because there are matters of impedance to consider so but you know I'll just try and see if it works. Here is a quick view of the uh, Klansman audio connector and I have a schematic for a full digital interface for the PRC320 here but I'm only going to use the uh, two resistors 120k and 12 kilo ohms at the top. I'm going to uh, do things a little bit differently here and instead of using these two resistors I'm going to put a potentiometer on the uh, mic input wire. So that will allow me to uh, check the level of uh, modulation. And the uh, view meter on the PRC320 is going to help me to determine the uh, correct level. Alright, everything is plugged in and I have the uh, radio plugged in into the computer and into a dummy load and with the interface and everything is connected. Okay, I forgot that the uh, logic ground for the PTT button has to be connected to the regular ground, otherwise it won't trigger the transmitter. So let's do that little quick, and there we go. Okay, so I put the uh, PRC320 in CW mode so I could see the maximum output here on the view meter. I'm going to click on the tune button on the computer and it does tune and it's uh, yeah it's halfway between the last two marks okay now I'm in SSB mode and I'm going to turn the potentiometer to the minimum and click on tune whoops and uh, hmm, it's already there that's weird whoops there we go so a little bit more here Oof. Not getting a good reading here. I think there is a limiter that's uh, entering into play here. And of course I have a 100k potentiometer so it's, a, it's too broad a range. So the potentiometer trick didn't work because my potentiometer is 500 kilo ohms and I really would have needed a 500 ohm potentiometer. So I put a 274 ohm resistor here in series with the uh, mic input. And uh, actually I'll click to the uh, tune button and boom it goes uh, full fledged so I'm not sure if I'm over driving it and uh, that's a problem. Let's try with the uh, TX audio level so I'll go on tune again and I'll reduce the level and see if that will reduce my uh, well tips. Ah, there we go okay so that seems to be the minimum here and uh, I just sent a beacon actually and uh, I'm receiving fine that's for sure you can see on the right side two stations SV1VN and SV8BUR uh, and uh, they did acknowledge my uh, beacon and that's the little star you see there on the right side so I'm just going to say thank you to both those stations but I can tell you already that uh, I didn't get a reply it seems, however, that I was received in the US by uh, WA2HYO, so that's pretty cool, 3622 miles, very nice. My whole digital station fits in this bag. Of course, it would have been much smaller had I used my KX2. Darn, I brought the wrong antenna. This is not my 2.5 meter whip. This is the antenna for my uh, PRC351 for the uh, 6 meters. So, change of plans. I'm going to have to use my uh, counterpoise here as the radiating element.
So here is the uh, complete station with my laptop, of course, the Mini Pro SC and the uh, PRC320. Everything is battery powered, of course, and the computer is booting up. I'm definitely receiving a lot of stuff, but no uh, calls recorded yet. Let's uh, send a CQ. Okay, ready to go. And it should be sending any second. Up, oh, there we go. Back to receive. Beaconing should start. Let's see. Any second now. There we go. So that's my beacon being uh, sent. Hopefully I will get some answer to that. There's something coming up here. Um, I don't know if it's in response to my call, but hopefully... Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Acknowledge, minus 12. SV... What is that, a 1? SV1... VN. Let's try to send him a message. I want to go to his frequency first. There we go. So beaconing will start again. You can see on the left there that uh, SV1VN is uh, talking to uh, 9L1YXJ. And actually I do receive here 9L1YXJ. I'm going to try to send him a message, but uh, we'll let the beacon go through first. And I see uh, KD4YDD, United States. I should, certainly should try him. The beacon should start. And there it goes. We see. Lots of stuff going on now. And a confirmation here that I am received by SV1VN. You see the little star here, right next to the uh, call sign. No reply from KD4YDD yet. I'm gonna try 9L1YXJ. HW means uh, how do you receive me, basically. Transmitting now. Alright guys, that uh, wraps it up for part 2. Remember to subscribe and uh, there is a little bell somewhere. You can click to get uh, reminders uh, when I post a video. Also, thanks again to uh, all my Patreon subscribers and the link is down below here. So if you'd like to help this channel, please do so because uh, everything counts. So my conclusion is that uh, JS8 call is a pretty darn good mode and uh, can be useful in a camp radio situation or bugging in at home. Portable, uh, it's not for me. I, I mean, it's possible, of course. Uh, again, Julian does it. so. But I wouldn't personally uh, use it portable just because uh, I have to carry more stuff. And that's the only reason, because otherwise it's very efficient. So I don't have any problem with it. And uh, I'm happy to see that it works with my uh, PRC320. It's a mode that could be uh, pretty useful uh, also on a boat. <laughs> and that's what I would use it for personally, because I'm into sailing. So. Uh, I remember when I was, uh, you know, going from the uh, from Florida to the Bahamas. Uh, it would have been nice to have a communication tool like this, where I, I would have been able to chat with people. Of course, uh, I can do it in Morse code, which is still my favorite by far. 
but uh, GS8 Core uh, has a lot of advantages. So I asked Jordan, the designer of the software, if he could uh, implement a feature that would allow the program to work without an external time source. And he actually did it, which is great. I don't know where the function is, but uh, if it's automatic or not. But I think it's awesome that actually someone uh, listens to uh, the users. You know, it's not always the case. We can hope for the future to have tablets. I would love to have an Android tablet with an integrated transceiver and that would be absolutely awesome. And someday we might have that. In the meantime, I'm going to stick to Morse code <laughs> and voice modes. But, you know, it's not to say that I'm not going to be using uh, GS8 Core once in a while because, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I guess I'm a little bit of a convert now. <laughs> Thanks to Julian. Have a great one.